All right, so two years ago it was Peter Molina. Last year it was Ironobo Sakeguchi. And this year here we are with Game Lab 2013 Legend Award and also PS4 main lead architect, Mark Cerny. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. So uh, you've been review reviewing your uh, time designing the PS4. It's been five years, if I'm correct. It's been five years, yes. Uh, was there any idea you have really, really clear from the beginning? Well, we knew we wanted to create a console that was much more developer-oriented. We, we talked about it in terms of being by game developers, for game developers. So pretty continuously throughout those five years, we've been soliciting the feedback from the great game creators first about what they want to see in a console, and then as we started creating it, what the reaction was to what we were putting in the console. So uh, you also mentioned during your panel that uh, there was like a collaborative and inclusive feeling in the project that everything clicked together. Uh, how was that, that feeling you got in your team? Well, I, I think it's very good. I mean, this was, um, historically speaking for Sony, the first um, hardware that was ever designed in such an open fashion. So for PlayStation 1, 2, and 3, it had been very much the creation of the hardware team. They'd, they'd design the circuitry, they'd make the documentation, um, and when it was all done, they just passed the documentation on to developer support who would brief the game creators. Really no interaction between the hardware team and uh, the game teams. And so for PlayStation 4, we took a very, very different approach. Okay. Um, so we finally got to see the console at E3. It was a secret until then. And the summer is here, so uh, it's getting hotter. How do you think that the PS4 is going to be... Uh, Cool it cooler when the, when the summer comes. I, mean, I think it should be just fine. They, they know how to design a console so that it won't overheat. If you're noticing that PlayStation 4 is smaller, that's because the power consumption is smaller. It's that simple. Um, I'm a personal fan of uh, motion controls. Um, I have a move and I use it with Wonderbook, for example. Uh, what can we expect of uh, move or motion controls in PS4? You, you also have the camera and the light on the light bar on the on the controller. I think the story there is still evolving at that time. I mean, there's some very interesting being, work being done by Media Molecules, and, Media Molecule, and others, and I think we're going to have to wait a bit and see how that all turns out. Any personal idea on how to take advantage of that? Um, yeah, well, I mean, I'm making a game, and for my game I'm using the DualShock 4, and, but that's really a reflection of what I'm trying to do, which is sort of a game that speaks the nostalgia that players have for those character action games of the past, like Crash Bandicoot or Sonic the Hedgehog. Okay, so PS4 uh, power by itself is obvious, um, but now there's a current trend that everyone's talking about the cloud, uh, mobile and other uh, devices. Uh, what do you think it could mean for the PS4? Well, I mean, we're very interested in cloud gaming as well. We uh, have, um, we're in the process of integrating Gaikai technology. Uh, we're using that in the remote play for Vita. Um, as far as where this heads in going forward, I think, um, I think it's going to be a very interesting five years. F personally, I feel that um, t test play is a very interesting concept. It's one of the potential uses of the cloud. It is testing the game well, well it's right out. Just seeing a bit about what the game can, can be. Okay, so um, in the last interview with Game Reactor, we have you at the E3. You said a really uh, nice sentence about the magical days on, of PS1, yes. that you wanted to uh, recover those days. Yes. What's, what's what you can, what want to achieve when the PS4 uh, comes out? How, how to recover that? I mean, we really wanted to make it so that the games were easier to make. Um, it, it got progressively harder on PlayStation 2 and PlayStation 3 to make the games, the development time get longer, and we're trying to, with PlayStation 4, reduce it and bring it back to more the way it used to be in those older days. Um, we're also seeing, um, because the hardware is more, um, more friendly, more easy to use, we're seeing a, a lot more indie development. Of course, we have a number of initiatives in place to foster that, but the enabler for that is that the hardware has this sort of supercharged PC architecture. So your panel was called Road to PS4, and it was short of your, your own road uh, all these years to PS4 and the industry road, more or less. So now for Max Cerny, what's, what's uh, Road to PS4 launch? What's up uh, for these months? 
Well, I mean, right now I'm focused on getting uh, PlayStation 4 um, ready, as well as Knack, of course, is a launch title. Going forward, I don't know. It's been a lot of fun being creative director on Knack. That's my first time uh, on any project, uh, being the creative director. And I think I'd like to keep doing that in the future. So getting back to Knack, uh, Knack it's an adventure game uh, with some really innovative elements. Um, do you think the adventure genre has been more or less abandoned in the last years? And what, what can you bring to it? Well, I mean, my view of all this is pretty simple. I think that if, if somebody makes a good game, then people will buy that game. And so I don't really look that much of the flow of how genres are received as time goes by. Uh, and in this case, um, the thought was just very simple. I knew there would be some great core games at launch, um, like um, Watch Dogs or Killzone. But I just wanted to be sure there'd be something for the rest of the family, um, sons, daughters, spouses, and the like. So forgetting about um, uh, specs and numbers, and do you think um, what can we expect from the next gen is the integration with uh, social features? There are a couple very interesting things that will happen in the next gen. Um, one of them is heightened social integration. I also think living software is going to be big. So I talk to a lot of game creators in the process of, of architecting PlayStation 4. And very interestingly, many different companies are all thinking the same thing, that in the future your relationship with the game will be longer. You, you won't get that disc and play it and have it um, be over when you finish the content on the disc is that more content will be coming um, by every week or month. You'll be downloading new missions. You'll be downloading new parts of the world to explore. Uh, in fact, that's a lot of the reason why we put a hard drive in every PlayStation 4 is we wanted to support the paradigm of living worlds going forward. What about the more, more bas basic entertainment? Uh, maybe, for example, uh, can we expect games like Marble Madness to feature a, a big in the big platforms uh, in the next years? Well, absolutely. We can expect games like Marble Madness. I don't think we'll get Marble Madness. I mean, this the, the hardware is much easier to use. Um, indie developers are now making quite a few games for it. And, and the, the Marble Madness back in the day was a conceptually driven title, much like the indie, developer, indie developers are creating today. So they can have, they can have a prominence also due to indie scene, maybe. Yes, I mean, I think that on um, PlayStation 4, there is going to be very rich content coming from the indie development community. Okay, thank you very much. Congratulations for tonight's award, and good luck with PS4's launch. Thank you. Thank you, thank you very much. 